Good morning and welcome to this worship service at First Presbyterian Church on this August 2nd. We're so glad that you are here. Wherever you are, you're welcome here in this space. It's good to be in this space again. It's been a while and we're happy to uh, be bringing this service to you from our sanctuary here at First Presbyterian Church. I have one announcement to share with you this morning. With all the rain, the wonderful rain that we've received, uh, the grass is greening, but the weeds are growing in the garden. So we're wondering if you would have some time this week to come over and uh, pull some weeds out of the gardens. Uh, it'll make them look a lot nicer for those driving by. It'll be very helpful, and it will be a great service to the church. So any time this week, if you can stop by with a bucket and uh, a little bit of a, of a trowel and pick those weeds out, that would be wonderful. Today we are celebrating the Sacrament of Communion, so if you don't yet have your elements ready and before you, please pause us. This is your chance. We know that they've been pausing us a lot. If they, if they don't like what, they're, what we're saying, they can just pause mm -hmm. us. So we know that you've been doing that, but now we're telling you, pause it and uh, go and get some bread and some juice, whatever you might have. Um, something to make it really special at home is to use a special plate or some kind of special towel to put your elements on. But go and get those and be ready for later in our service, we will celebrate communion together. Let us worship. Jesus into the world not to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor eternal God in your great mercy forgive our sins free us from selfishness that we may choose your will and obey your commandments. Help us to be a servant people. Sometimes we do not do what you command. We are often silent when we should speak and useless when we could be useful. Have mercy on us, O God. Forgive us and free us from our sin. Cleanse us from all our offenses 
Deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires. With lowliness and meekness, may we draw near to you, confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, the good news is this. Jesus Christ died for us. Jesus rose for us. Jesus reigns in power for us. Jesus prays for us. The good news is that we are given over and over again that opportunity to start again, to do what it is God is calling us to do in following Jesus Christ as his disciples. Let us go. Let us live that forgiveness and that grace. Amen. Amen. This reading is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Here we are with a, another one of the miracle stories. Now this miracle is significant because it's in all four Gospels. If all four gospel writers included this miracle, there's something that we should be taking from it. There's something that we should be really hearing and understanding. So it's important to know that, that the time that this is happening and Jesus is with his disciples and they're needing some space and there's a large crowd coming and they, they kind of still need some space, it's because this is occurring right after John the Baptist was beheaded. And so they come to this time and this space, and, and they're, they're heavy. I mean, they're just, they're stressed out. They're, they're mourning. They're concerned. They're fearful. And they come to this time, and they're like, man, I just need my space. I mean, we know what that's like. I mean, to just need a minute, and, and there's people, a crowd, forming around them. So it makes sense that they immediately think, well, send them away. And, of course, it's, uh, it's dinner time, and people are hungry. And so regardless of that weight that Jesus is feeling right now, he has compassion. And ultimately that is the heart of the gospel, that Jesus has compassion for the people, that Jesus is here to share compassion for the people and to call his disciples to be compassionate to the people around him. So this text, it really points us to what resurrection power is all about. And uh, there's three pieces to that um, within this pericope. First of all, that compassion piece, that Jesus has compassion. And second, that the responsibility is entrusted to us. We were talking about how this is profound because Jesus didn't just go and feed these hungry people. He didn't just go and feed the multitude. He looked to his disciples and he said, you feed them. You go do this. That's God entrusting us with the ability to go into the world and do the work of Christ, entrusting us. We have a right now, because we've been given it by God, to go and be the church, be the hands and feet of Jesus. You know, I, I've been hearing a lot lately about rights, that, that we have rights and we're taking away our rights, or but I have a right, and there's just been a lot of talk about that. And, and it, it's good, and it's, it's good conversations to be having, but sometimes we need to remember that our rights come with responsibility. Think about our right to drive a car when we're 16. That comes with the responsibility to drive a car safely, to follow the laws of the road, 
to, to care that there's other people and, and you're driving a, a vehicle that could take away their life, right? It comes with the responsibility. Uh, we have a right to own guns and we have a responsibility to own those guns safely and to, to put wise decisions in front of those machines. We have all kinds of rights. We have the right to worship. We have the right to gather in this country freely as Christians and worship how we want to worship. And that worship comes with responsibility. It comes with the responsibility to, to pay attention to what's going around, going on around us. And the fact right now that we're in a pandemic and we have a responsibility to the people we're worshiping with to do it safely, to step back and say, wait, now's not the right time. We're responsible to you and to you to make sure that we're doing this well. And, and so there's so many different things that, that we're entrusted with in this world that we're given the right to. What we're called to here is to take responsibility for that. You go feed my people. You take this right that I'm giving you and be responsible with it and do as I command you. Feed my people, do my work. So that third piece that we hear here is that um, God gives us the power to work for good in the world together and gives us the power to work for good in the world together no matter the circumstance. Those disciples were heavy hearted and together they were able to do something magnificent. They were able to fill baskets of food and, and, and share with this multitude and feed them so much so that there were baskets left over, 12 baskets left over because they worked together to do the work of Christ in the world. And, and so no matter the circumstance, no matter the pandemic, no matter the political strife, no matter the, the struggle we have in our own lives, in our own families, in our own community, we are given the power to work together for the miracle and the love and the goodness of Jesus Christ alive in our world. So how can we work together in this day and age? How can we, what, how do we work together in this day and age when, when we, we haven't been together uh, since, uh, I believe it's been March now, right Kim? We haven't been together in this space and we're standing here, just the two of us, talking to an empty room, but we know you're at the other end of the uh, other side of this camera. What can we do during this time? We are empowered by Jesus Christ to, to go out and to serve others and to care for others. Anything we can do uh, during this time to feed others, to protect others, to do the physical things that we need to do to, to, uh, to protect others from getting sick, for example, to sharing words of encouragement to people who are serving in hospitals around this country, doctors and nurses, uh, to give words of encouragement and support to them. Jesus empowers us to do that. Uh, we don't have to physically be with someone either to do that. We have all kinds of ways to communicate today, uh, our feelings and our thankfulness uh, to others. So reach out. This is what our call is right now, is to reach out during this time of pandemic and isolation as we make difficult decisions. None of these decisions are easy. Everyone is in the same boat trying to make the best decision they can from professional sports teams to school districts to churches and uh, Maybe we may not agree exactly with the decision that's made, but let's let's go forward and support uh, Together so that we can get through this difficult time uh, Into a brighter future Those are the kind of things I think I, I think of when we especially in this day and age I think that's a powerful question that we all need to ask ourselves. What can we do? What can we do to work together right now to be responsible for the commandment and the miracle and the resurrection power that we have been entrusted with? You know, it, a miracle took place on a hillside in Galilee some 2,000 years ago. It impacted the lives of 5,000 people so profoundly that the story was was shared over and over again in all four Gospels Remember that all four Gospels over the course of time picked this story up because it had such an impact So today What is that? What is that miracle that we're supposed to do? You know, I, I thought of another thing 
very, very important is racism. And uh, I think that anything that we can do to fight racism, wh whether we're at home, whether at work, whether at church, whether at a store, wherever we are, and we see or we hear something that we can step up and say, that's not right. Uh, that's not right. Uh, you're, you're being racist with that statement or with that action. I think that that's vitally important in this day and age too. Uh, we've seen so much uh, focus on it in recent months and I believe that we as a body, as a, a congregation, uh, move forward uh, fighting racism. Absolutely, and, and making friendships that we can work together Amen. for the common good of the world. So that miracle that happened all those years ago, it needs to happen again, look. These baskets are empty. These baskets are empty because you and I, we've been entrusted to go and fill them up and go into the world and feed the hungry people. Let us go. Let us be the hands and feet of Jesus. Let's take responsibility for the gift that we've been given in Christ. Amen. Amen. to the table of grace. Come to the table of grace. This is God's table. It's not yours or mine. Come to the table of grace. Come to the table sacrament a little differently this time, virtually, each of us in our own places. That does not, however, diminish the sacredness of this moment. Jesus called his disciples, feed my sheep. He didn't put physical parameters on this commandment. He simply said, go, feed my sheep. And so today, we recognize that in order to feed others, we must first take care of our own spiritual nourishment. So come, all you who are carrying heavy burdens, Christ says, come to me and I will give you rest. Let us come to this table that God has invited us to partake in. Let us gather one and all, gather as the people of God. Let us pray. 
Loving God, in many and various ways, you have visited and redeemed your people, finally sending to us your beloved Jesus. We thank you, God, for the gift of Christ. As one of us, he came, at first a tender infant, and he grew a child, a youth, and into adulthood. He rejoiced with those who rejoiced. He wept with those who wept. To the despairing, he spoke a word of hope. To the sick he gave healing, to the rejected he was a friend. And yet he was betrayed and nailed to a cross. But you lifted him from the grave and restored him to life that he might be with us and we with him, alive forevermore. Therefore, with all the saints and with the angels in heaven, we praise you, saying, Holy, 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 Holy God, God, of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Eternal God, King of heaven and earth, the life and death of Jesus Christ we proclaim, his resurrection from the dead and his place in God's glory. His coming in triumph we await. Come, beloved Jesus, come. Nourish our minds and our hearts with your goodness. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he blessed and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Friends, every time we eat this bread, and drink this cup we do so proclaiming the gracious mercy of our lord jesus christ in me and in you for the goodness of the world take eat these are the gifts from god for the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, we give you abundant thanks and praise for your presence with us even now, even in these times of uncertainty, even in all the risky decisions that we have to make on a daily basis. You are here. You are feeding us and nourishing us with the love and the grace of Jesus Christ that we might be empowered to go into the world and share your goodness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray, O oh God, for this great world that you have entrusted to our care. We pray for our leaders. We pray for all of those who are going through difficult times, be it natural disaster, be it illness, be it addiction. We pray, O oh God, that we might find ways to join hands in solidarity and work together for your goodness made known to all. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray, O oh God, for those who are near and dear to us, for those who are struggling, for those recovering from COVID-19, for those starting chemotherapy, for those who continue their cancer treatments, for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, for those who are ready to transition into empty nests, for our students heading to college, for our students heading back to school, for our teachers who love them and care for them. God, we pray for safety. We pray for all of those things that we name now in silence. God, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayers. prayers. You call us to follow Jesus Christ, and we follow him as we join him in praying as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you in your going out and your coming in, in your lying down and your rising up, in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen.